Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Tudrin Field here on the campus of Smith Vocational High School. It is October 20th, and we're here for some exciting Northampton Youth Football League action. I'm Andrew Shelfo, joining the booth, as always, by Rob Osberg. How are you, Rob? Fantastic! What a day! It is October 20th, and it feels like August 20th. It feels like we can start the whole season all over again. Well, we're up here with our shorts. It's a beautiful day. It's a great day for football, and this is a rematch, I understand, of the game of a similar matchup last week. Yes, last week the Pee Wees played the Amherst Hurricanes and they had a tough first half um, but managed to pull away in the second half for an impressive, I believe it was 35-12 to 12 victory in the end. Wow. So now the Blue Devils are going to be starting on offense today. The referees are out there trying to get everybody all set. They have the ball. That's a good sign. Looks like we can start the game. Blue Devils are going to start on their own 40-yard line after some last-minute equipment adjustments. Well, I hope this team doesn't come into this game a little overconfident after that dominant second half. You can be sure that the Hurricanes made some adjustments during this uh, practice week. Well, one of the things that the Hurricanes probably couldn't have adjusted this week is if you take a look, Rob, over on that bench on the far side of the field, they don't have a very deep bench. And so that contributed to uh, the dominance in the second half last week? I think so. That and the fact that I think Northampton liked the mud a little bit more than Amherst did. It was a muddy game. And, the t the, you know, it has been raining, and the field probably is a little bit soft today, but it's been such a nice day. We hope it's dried out, and we're ready to we're ready for some peewee football. Here we go. First no, first no, offensive no. series. We have Tudrin up under center. Checks to make sure this players are set. Takes a snap. There's the handoff. A big hole up the middle for Jacob Renner. Gets through into the secondary, and he's close to the first down. A nice way to start the game. That was a great second effort, third effort, and fourth effort by Renner. That, 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 was, uh, that, was, some, that was some of that pursue and grab tackling that's so prevalent at this division. Well, it looked like he was going for the ball there, and Renner had to uh, kind of stop his momentum to hold on to the ball and make sure it wasn't stripped. Nice way for the Blue Devils to start off. And you will notice that the coaches are on the field in our Pee Wee division, and they do that because this is instructional and football is a very complex sport. The coaches for both teams are constantly barking out orders. They're trying to get their kids in the right place. This is a very much a teaching league and it's great that this league allows the coaches to be right there on the field with the players to remind them where to go and what to do. Second down here and second and one. Short yardage in the shotgun formation which is new for the Pee Wees. There's a snap, a clean snap. He's got a little time. He throws the ball up there. He's got somebody open. Right through the hands. Right through the hands of Tyler Van Ass. Still, it was a nice play, Rob. It was a nice play. That was a tough ball to catch. There was a lot of wobbling in that pass. It made it extra tricky to catch. I've seen Tudrin throw the ball, and he's capable of throwing some mean spirals. Unfortunately, he didn't quite have his hand set on the ball in that play. In fact, he got rid of it just before. Real impressive outside rush. Well, one thing I like about that is uh, the offense calling that play shows that they have confidence that they are going to get this first down eventually. Second and one was kind of a free play for them, and they took advantage of it. So we'll it's back to the basics on this play. The other thing that makes Pee Wee football at this division particularly interesting is they play on a truncated field. The goal lines are moved in 10 yards from each end. So if you take 100 and you minus 10 Don't times 2, you end open. up with an 80-yard field. 50, 50 so we'll, we'll keep that in yeah, mind as they progress nice. down the Not field. Think about Christmas. You got truncated and advanced math in there. That's great. Third and uh, half a yard. Tudrin up under center. He has two backs behind him. Van Ass out to the left. Takes the snap. There's the handoff. The Looking Brennan. for some room. He's got a nice hole. There's the first corner. down and more. 40. Pushed out of bounds at the 30. Hey, did you nice see that? Run. Did, you, did you see that great block by number 83, Van Ass, on that play? Sometimes the key block in those plays is often made by a running back. It's made by an end. It's made by a wide receiver. And Van Ass did a great job sealing off the corner. That left a lane for Renner to burst through. Big gain for Northampton. Now, so the seal is the right word. He sealed it off, and, and the runner was able to run through for a big game. So that picks up first down and 10 at the 30-yard line. And using the Osberg math, that means they're only 20 yards away from the goal line. Yeah, the other, the other guy did a real nice job in that play was number 68, Seraphin, made a key block on that play. Nice job by the left side of the Northampton line. Real nice job. So the first couple of plays, they look pretty crisp out there. Let's see if it continues. Yeah, Seraphin's made key blocks on the first three plays. He's off to a good start. Tujan takes a stamp. Handoff ball's on the ground. 
Looks like it's recovered by North. It was a handoff to Rankins. He fell on the ball. Luckily three. recovered. Loss of about two yards on the play. Is it? Put them back in a second, about 11. As soon as we start seeing how crisp they looked, we, we well, jinxed them with that one. You know, I mean, this, this is a complex game. It's all about timing. It's all about rhythm. It's all about getting all those steps coordinated. It's a little bit of orchestration involved in a, in a well crafted play and unfortunately that when the timing was off a little bit the footwork was off the result was a fumble but hand recovered they live to fight again live to fight on second down and 12 same formation as on the previous play Tudor up under center takes the snap there's the handoff there's a hole he's getting to the secondary he's got about seven eight yards on that that was jacob renner on the run that's a gain of i want to say about 10 yards there they'll bring up third and two they really love the block uh lafountain made number 54 cam lafountain made a big time block in that play these are what fifth and sixth graders third and fourth third and fourth graders oh my goodness wow they're looking bigger and bigger already these are third and fourth graders and i think Mr. LaFountain is a third grader, if I recall. And these are third and fourth graders who have seven games under their belt so far the season. This is their eighth game. The final game of the regular season, and they're looking forward to making the playoffs if all breaks well for them. Third and two. Tudrin looks around to make sure everybody is all set. Renner and Rankins get themselves positioned properly. There's the snap, and there was a little bit of motion problem there. Yeah, that's going to make it third and about seven after after that one. So that was one of those plays where everybody else seemed to know the uh, the, the, the snap count except for the quarterback in that play. It like. I, I don't know. Tough to tell. Yeah, they've uh, the Pee Wees have been um, switching quarterbacks a little bit in practice and at games, and and maybe that caused a little bit of the confusion. But I think it was boils down to one of the basic things: the quarterback center exchange, which can which can sometimes be problematic, as we just saw. So that means Coach Lamana will have to. Think a little more deeply with a third and seven play as opposed to a third and two. But they've got the play. They've broken the huddle. They're up to the line. Let's see what they're going to do. Tujan takes the snap. There's the handoff up the left-hand side. Another big hole. He's got a lot of green in front of him. There it is, the touchdown. Jacob Renner, great run. There's a flag in that play. There's a flag, unfortunately. There's a flag down. It could have been Chevy Wall with a little bit of a hole. Let's see what we got. Yep, this one's coming back. You know, it was focused on uh, the Northampton center in that play, number 75, Shelfo, and he did a great job as well. So far, I'm really liking the play of the Northampton interior line. They're doing a great job, and even though we've had some penalties in this play, the, the dominant play of our offensive line bodes well for the Blue Devils' chances as this game progresses. I think what happened there is as Renner broke out to the outside, uh, Chevy Wall uh, had his man to block and he was in the right position and ended up holding him. So 10 yards further back brings up third and uh, it's long about 20, 19. Isn't it? <laughs> well, it's almost 20 yards. This will be third and very long for him. Well, as they say, this is fourth down territory, so they do have two downs to try to get it. They get along at it. Third and a hole. Third and a bolt. Coach now, if I were the Hurricanes in this play, I would be focused on number 25, and I'm sure the coaches are reminding them to focus on uh, Renner number 25. He's been impressive so far. Renner has been impressive, and his backfield mate Rankins is equally impressive. So, two opportunities third here to get the 20 yards. That loss. Tudrin up under center. Takes the snap. He's keeping himself, running up the middle. Had a little bit of daylight. Past the third tackler. He's gained most of it back. Finally brought down about the 22-yard line. A nice run. I don't think he took one step without a hurricane draped over him. I think he carried the hurricanes for 18 yards. That was a Boy, Tudrin showed impressive strength in that play as he had an arm on him for every stride of that impressive run. Well, also, that play shows what you were just talking about, Rob. It shows how well the offensive line has been doing so far. You have to have a lot of confidence in your line to say on a third and 20 play, we're going to do the quarterback up the middle. Well, you know, I, I got snookered on that play, too, because I was focused on 25, and I'm sure the rest of the Hurricanes were as well as Snooden. It's Tudrin snuck up the middle. Camp lines up. Big Fourth down here. and two. Just outside of the 20-yard line, 
Trujan takes the snap. There's the handoff, trying to get to the outside. A little bit of a spin move, still has some work to do. And he is finally brought out of bounds at the 23 yard line. He's gonna be short of the first down. That was one of those plays where in about two years, Rankins gets a first down on that play. Unfortunately, on that particular play, instead of cutting up the middle and just getting the first down, Rankins tried to bounce it outside and took three steps back. That left that plenty of time for the Amherst defense to pursue and stop the Blue Devils just a yard short of a first down. You're right. We have seen that a couple times this year where the player cuts in the different in the wrong direction. Um, he may have forgotten that he only needed about two yards on that play. Needless to say, turning it over on downs, we'll now see the Hurricanes on offense for the first time. And of course, after last week, I'm sure, as you said, Rob, they've got a little bit of revenge on their mind. I uh, didn't make it over to Amherst in time to see the Pee Wee game, but Amherst traditionally has a couple athletes out there. Um, they usually have some good speed in the backfield. It seems like every year one of those hurricanes can break forth and take it, take it deep. Well, let's see if the Blue Devils have learned anything after last week as these two traditional rivals this year get to play two weeks in a row. The coaches are out on the field, making sure the players are fired up and ready to go. One of the players for the Blue Devils whose play has gotten better and better all year is nose tackle Will Shaw. We've been uh, paying attention to Will, and he's become just a force in the middle of that uh, offensive, the defensive line. Silly dog. He and number 67, Aiden Peterson really done a dominant job for the Blue Devils. Yeah, the line play has been really impressive this year. They've really come together as a unit on both sides of the ball. Uh, and on the offensive side, the, playing the offensive line is pretty hard. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff you got to remember. It's not just all about being the biggest. You also have to be light on your feet and keep in mind what the play call is. Well, that play took about 35 minutes to no kidding, put together. I, I'm kind of hoping that's not going to be their pattern the rest of the day today. Or we're going to have to find things to talk about. <laughs> First to 10 for the Hurricanes. There's the snap. Quarterback hands off. Looking for some room on the left-hand side. Misses the first tackler. Still got a lot of room up the side. It looks like a hole. I don't see a flag. He is now in a foot race. Chevy Wall, the last guy. He's got an opportunity to get him. He's down to the 10. He's finally in for the touchdown. And, Rob, I don't see any flags on the field. Well, Amherst a, six, yeah, Blue call, Devils nothing. Well, I guess that Amherst. play, uh, it took 35 minutes to, 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 to scheme out that play. It was worth it, I guess. Because that, that was a big time run for the uh, Hurricanes, and they are here to play. And as we talked about just before they took over, they, they, Hurricanes always seem to have explosive speed in the backfield, and they showed that off on the first play. They did. I'm a little bit surprised, too, because we saw a lot of that last week. The Blue Devils should have been ready for it. But now the Hurricanes are going to line up for the two-point conversion. As we know, at the Pee Wee division, they don't kick for extra points. Now, who was that runner? Was that number 30, 38? I think that's Isaac Castro McCauley on that Yes, run. that was number 38. Well, we're going to have to be paying attention, Isaac, for the rest of the day today. So Amherst coaches, uh, sticking with the plan to take a long time in the huddle, are coming up with a two-point conversion play. All right, so 38, you go left, 26, you go right, 10. You're Is he scratching right in where the dirt are. out there? Okay, here we go, now we're ready. Now we're ready to go. This is only their second offensive play. Quarterback looks around, make sure everybody's set. Takes the snap, and he's going to run up the middle himself. Whistle, I think. Not quite think. sure why there was a whistle. I mean, there's no flag, but there was a whistle. I don't know what that call is. Huh? Oh, now they're calling a legal procedure on Amherst. I wonder why, because nobody moves. I think the coach is wondering the same thing. There's no requirement that anybody move, as far as I know. There was a snap. There was a quarterback sneak. Everybody stood there. I guess it looked funny. We're very confused. Well, what's un we're, it's not unusual that we're confused. It's unusual that we're confused this early. I think they're confused, too, and that could make this huddle even longer. Well, now they're pushing it back five yards. Looks like the Amherst coach's please fell on deaf ears. So that'll make the two-point conversion a little bit more difficult. You know, from our angle, about 200 feet away, we couldn't see the penalty. <laughs> well, yeah, it, uh, the obviously right. the center moved and the, the quarterback moved. And that's really what happens on every single play. Yeah. I think that's all that has to move, isn't it? 
I, I don't know. There must be some rule somewhere that everybody needs to move. I don't, I don't know. It's a good play. Good fake. That was a good fake. All right, back at it. Five yards further back. Takes the snap. Fake the hand up to 38. Now looking to throw. Throws the ball up. Falls. It was a close play. That was number two in there. That was Jaquan Taylor who uh, screened the receiver. So he couldn't really see it, and the ball fell to earth harmlessly. That makes it 6 nothing. Amherst Hurricanes. Blue Devils, second opportunity on offense coming up. Sure, the ham coaches can't be pleased with that first defensive no stance. That was one. The Blue Devils take over first in 10 on the Hurricane 40. They're down 6 nothing. This is the Blue Devils' second possession. The first possession was, was uh, deterred by a couple of big penalties, and that's a QB sneak by Tudor. He rushes up the middle, and that's good for eight yards. Good seven, eight yard gain for Hamp. Nice run. It's number five, William Miskowski, and the stop there for Amherst. Good, good first down play. Keep it simple. Use your, use your uh, superior strength on the inside of the line. Sometimes the best football is the simplest football, and Blue Devils kept it simple. Burst ahead for eight yards. I'm sure after that first down, uh, the, that first series, the Blue Devils are determined to get back on the board and to not let their second possession go without a score. Second and short for the Blue Devils. They're on their own 48-yard line. That's Tudor under center. Calls out some final instructions. And that's Rankins. And, number 22, Justin Rankins. and Rankins did a super job there, the bursting down. forward for the first down. down. Unlike down the by 26, T.D. Cardoza, T.D. Cardoso for Amherst. Unlike the carry at the end of the last drive, Rankins cut up the middle that time. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and Rankins obviously adjusted and made a great cut. First down, Blue Devils. They the fans, take over first and 10 could win big. on the Hurricane 48-yard line. And uh, the food booth is booming, so come on over. It is absolutely a gorgeous day here at Tudor and Field on the campus of Smith Vocational High School. Uh, this is Northampton we got Kiwi football. Chapsui, folks. Come on over. Get chili, nachos. That's Rankins. Break it, break it. Oh, uh, after breaking, nice. after breaking a couple of tackles, uh, Rankins was finally brought down, but uh, but not, but not until he lost about six yards. Blue Devils. That Perez has been all over the field this afternoon. That's his fourth tackle. Hamp D's got a Hamp offense got to step up and shut him down. That'll bring up second down and about 17 yards to go for the Blue Devils. Rankins has had a big time game so far. Unfortunately, didn't get the kind of blocking on that play that he's used to so far this game and was taken down after a seven yard loss. Second and 17. The two back set, and there might have been motion there. There was. That's going to make it third and about tw second and 22. It's going to move that back five yards. Tudrin went for the hard count and unfortunately faked out his own teammates. And that's number 56, Zach Martinez, reporting into the game. This is second and long. This is not what the, this is not what the Blue Devils were looking to do after that explosive strike by the Hurricanes. Tudrin is in the shotgun. That's a trips right formation. It's got Rankins in the backfield. That's Shelfo with a tricky snap, and he made a nice one. There's a throw. He's got a receiver open, incomplete. Yeah, that was to number uh, number six, Mont Connor Mott on that play. Unfortunately, the ball came up a little short, but I think there's a penalty on the play play anyway, and I'm not sure that the Hurricanes will accept that. They may actually take the down. Let's see. Let, that's a that's a motion call. And I think the penalty is declined, bringing up third and 22. That was a motion penalty. The ham coaches are looking for an explanation. The coaches of this, uh, of this team, head coach is Joe Lamana. He's assisted by Eric Matikansky, Ron Salfrank, and Josh Tudrin. 
they've done a great job with these peewees all, all season long, and you can see their progress each and every day. This gives us a quick opportunity to thank some of our sponsors. Uh, the premium sponsors for Northampton Youth Football include the Northampton Police Relief Association, the Calvage, Calvin Coolidge Nursing Home, and Angelic Billers. Those are the big those are the big sponsors. Those folks have been most generous to this league, and we really appreciate their support. He's going to keep it himself. That's Tudor on the keeper. He rumbled ahead for about six yards. Unfortunately, they had a long way to go, and that's going to lead to a punt. And here comes the punt. It's not actually a punt, but it's a 15-yard advancement down the field, and that's going to bring up first and 10 for the Hurricanes right about their own 37-yard line, 38-yard line. So on a fourth down play, when you're used to seeing a punt, you don't see it at the peewee level. What you see is the ball move 15 yards and a turnover. That's going to bring, bring uh, the Hurricane offense onto the field with a first and 10. They're going to start at their own 38-yard line. Certainly the Northampton coaches are going to look for a much better effort out of their squad in this particular play. Reminder, folks, the 50-50 raffles going around. All proceeds donated to YFL. They're over on the Amherst side, folks. The lovely lady in the green blouse over there with a bucket full of tickets and cash. Here for a chance to win. And Amherst continues their sort of leisurely pace in terms of getting in and out of plays. I think the coach had to check his notes three or four times before he was ready to come on. Probably needed to take a cell phone call or something, but but he got out there eventually. And, and after checking his notes and looking at the plays, he called one in the Amherst Hurricanes. Get up to the get up to the line of scrimmage. First and ten now, Amherst. And that's 38. That's number 41. Oh, that's a nice play by number one, Ben Salfrank, and he uh, was aided by Jacob Renner, who came in to finish off the tackle after no gain. That's the kind of defense the Blue Devils want to see. That was a real nice play by number one, Salfrank, who unfortunately uh, on the first play wasn't there to make the uh, tackle on the last drive, but he redeemed himself on that play. What a nice play by Ben Salfrank. Going to be second and 10 now, Amherst. About the 38. Camp D with a big stop there. This will give us an opportunity to talk about our gold sponsors, our purple sponsors, our orange sponsors, and our uh, psychedelic blue sponsors. Uh, the gold sponsors for the ma uh, gold major sponsors for the Blue Devils include Pioneer Landscapes, MRW Connected, Liquors 44, Attorney Mark Tanner of Bacon and Wilson, Osberg and Associates, Florence Savings Bank, and World War II Club. The Deuce. Second and 10 Hurricanes. Second and 10 Hurricanes in the midfield area, just short of the 40 yard line. Second and 10 here. Calling the signals, taking a long time, letting the Blue Devils get in position. Shaw breaks through the line, can't quite bring him down, but who's there to bring him down? Number 65, Noah Renner. He did bring him down kind of high, but I don't think there's a flag on the play, Rob. No, he is a vicious tackler, Renner. He, you know, he's a tall guy and tackles tall. And unfortunately, sometimes he's tall and that makes him about head height for the guy he's tackling. Yeah, and once again on that play, Rob, we see the continued, uh, I'll call it a little bit early game dominance of the defensive, of the line play. Blue Devil line is, is doing its job today. Well, you know who did a real nice job in that play on the corner there was Tudrin. He was able to keep the runner inside and allow, allow Renner to, to track him down. Yeah, and that was a, a fake handoff, and the quarterback kept it himself, and I think that just gave the line a little bit more time that it needed to, to go through and bust up that play. Will Shaw broke right through, and even though he didn't get the tackle, he uh, certainly put the fear into the quarterback, I'm sure. We also have an opportunity to now to thank the blue sponsors for the Blue Devil football. They include Collective Copies, Newman's Construction, Goggins Real Estate, Joe's Pizza, the Whalen Insurance Agency, Dove Business Associates, Valley Home Improvement Incorporated, the Weber and Grinnell Insurance Agency, the Blue Bonnet Diner, and Strides. Family sponsors include the Morrisons, the Benedizics, the Berensons, the Zinos, the Tudrins, and the Burnishes. Thank you to all. 
but for your generosity, there would be no Blue Devils in football. And while the Hurricanes are in one of their protracted huddles, the Blue Devil coaches are taking advantage of the opportunity to shuffle players in and out. Because don't forget, Rob, we were talking about what nice weather it is, but it's pretty hot in those uniforms. Sure is, but we have plenty of time to relax in between plays. <laughs> of course, if you haven't Third and a little bit now for Amherst. Third and 14. Take your time. Quarterback takes the snap. There's the handoff, looking for some room on the right. Chevy Wall is determined, and he's brought down by number 25, Jacob Renner. Jake, there's a flag on the play, but what you saw there, Rob, is Jacob Renner, who is a um, very proficient at, at giving the stiff arm. There we saw he knows how to avoid it as well. well he sure does. What a great tackle. And that's going to bring a fourth down. The coaches are going to decide if they're going to take that penalty. Looks like. No, they're going to decline, decline it. So that'll bring up a fourth down and 14 to go. Wise decision, I think, to decline that penalty. And this should be no decision on the part of the Hurricanes. Coach, you just want to punt, and then you want to get off the field so the kids can play. It's just not fun. No, we're going to think about it, it for a looks while. looks like they're talking over back there. And we're going to think about this. We're going to, we're going to have a discussion. About 15 for them now. I think they need to consult. They didn't plan for this. They didn't plan for the, uh, that they might have to figure something out on fourth down. Well, this is. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I overheard. I overheard the, our, our production manager, uh, Andrew Kesson of Kesson Productions, theorizing that the reason they're taking so much time between plays is that they don't have a deep bench, and this gives their players an opportunity to rest. Well, after discussing yeah, they it, they have, this guy, they have decided to punt. This, this think, is I the Amherst that, Hurricanes version of the Four Corners. I think you know. I think that's 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 very clever on your part, Mister Mister Kesson. Well. We'll be first and ten now. Here, you know, give the kids a time so time the to rest. Is coming yeah. on the field, great field position for Northampton now. Got to go both ways. So that'll make it first down for Northampton. Uh, let's see where they're going to spot the ball here as they march off the 15 yards for the punt. Just as there's no place kicking, there is no punting. So when the team decides to punt, they move the ball 15 yards down the field. Hey, we have to give a shout out to the Northampton New Football Board led by President Hank Gerard. His vice president is Ron Berenson. Secretary is Erica Lamano. Treasurer and board MVP Diana Zinal has been also our queen of merchandise. The board's assisted by members Manfred Melcher, Taryn Johnson, Patrick Pickens, and Brian Bisesky. And I'm sure you can hear all of that over the uh, chanting of uh, one of those one of those rap stars. Blue Devils very quickly break the huddle, call the play. There's run to the left side. There's 10 yards, trips up after a gain of about 15, 16 yards, calling timeout. Coach Lamana very briskly calls timeout. There's a flag on the field. There's a hold on the Blue Devils. Now that could be another part of strategy there on the part of the Amherst Hurricanes by taking so long in the huddle with running time in these quarters and halves. So we're going to have about a seven play half here. That's fantastic. Do football seven plays a half? It's uh, hard to develop a player when you're not really playing very much in the games. But that'll bring up a first and 20 yards for the Blue Devils. And the fact that the Blue Devils called timeout suggests that we must be late in the first half. That's that's what it leads me to believe. Our, our sense of time has been warped by all the time in the huddle. Ay, ay, ay. Well, this, this makes for an interesting match, but probably uh, a deficient entertainment. <laughs> this is the eighth game of the season. You know, we've talked about a lot of things. I don't know what we have left to talk about, Rob, because there's nothing going on in the field. I, I, you know, unfortunately, I don't have my player personnel sheets with me. Otherwise, we could probably do bios on the players in between these huddles. Yeah, we could update their bios in the time we have. All right, first to 20. Tujan takes the snap. There's the handoff. Looking for some room on the right-hand side as Rankins fights his way forward for a gain of about three yards. And I'm looking for a flag. Mercifully, there isn't one. All right, that'll keep the clock running, which I don't know if it's a good thing or not. I think there's been about nine plays. I think seven of them have resulted in penalties. No, there's been 12 plays. Eight of which have resulted in penalties. And in fact, at this level, with a little bit of effort, you could call a penalty on every play. As they say, it's not not pretty to look at right now. All right, coaches are in the huddle. Calling just the right play for this second and 18 situation on the 48 yard line of the Blue Devils. As a reminder, as we say every game, there is running time here in these games. Bag of tricks there. 
get themselves So we the never really know how much time is left in the quarter or the half. There was just a whistle there too. I don't really even know what that was for. Was that just a reminder to the team to get out of the huddle or something? I'm not sure. So here we go. We have Tudrin in the shotgun formation. He's got Renner in the backfield with him. A trips formation to the right. There's the snap. Good snap. There's the handoff. Looking for some room. One guy to beat to the outside. He's got the corner. Down to the 40. Cuts it back inside. A nice move. Nothing but daylight now. 20 in for the touchdown. Number 25, Jacob Renner. Great run by Renner. Put Northampton on the board for the first time. That's what we're talking about, Rob. That's what we needed to ex get the excitement up. You know, I'm not sure if that was a broken tackle or just a really special move. That was a little stop and go, whoop, go by, touchdown runner. It was a, it was a was very, a it was play. a very athletic move. Really, really uh, left the defender in a vulnerable position. Those defenders were determined to track him down. They got a full head of steam, and Renner went whoop, and they went by him, and he just tiptoed through the tulips in for a touchdown. The other thing that's uh, that's good, that's worth pointing out, is that this is the last game of the season, so they've had a, a whole year to develop, and we've seen a couple of shotgun plays here, and we've talked about the difficulties of the center quarterback exchange, even more so with the shotgun. Uh, but those two plays have worked hey, out well for them. I think them. we're four for four in the shotguns with the snaps. Impressive job by number 75 Shelfo on those shotgun starts. Now these yeah, two point conversions a big two. play because it is six six. Looking to go ahead in the game. Quarterback takes a snap, keeps it himself. He's running up the middle. There's a big bunch up there. It's a no rugby call match. Yet. Looks like he's going to be stopped no. short. Point conversion will be no good. And that is halftime. Nice half time. Nice stop on the Amherst D there to hold him. On the field. Start of our second half. We are on the. We are at the start of today's. Pee Wee Youth football game. This is the start of the second half. The first half ended in a 6-6 tie. The Hurricanes ran six total plays in that half, but one of them was about a 70-yard touchdown run that put the Hurricanes on the board early. The Blue Devils definitely had control of the play, but some untimely penalties stopped their drives, resulting in a 6-6 score. I'm sure the coaches spent a lot of time talking about having a clean half in the second half of today's game. It is a beautiful day here on the campus of Smith Vocational High School. We are at Tudrin Field. We are rocking. It's a beautiful day. It's a great day to wrap up this year's regular season. The Blue Devils need a win, we think, in order to earn a spot in the playoffs, which will kick off next week. It's a four-team playoff division, and the Blue Devils are in the fight. This is a real important half for these guys, and I think they know it, and I think the coach has reminded them that a win today is going to be critical in order to earn a spot in the playoffs. Let's all sit back and enjoy Queen together. Andrew Kesson, our production manager, you are a music trivia buff. What was the year this came out? 1979, 78, 77, I think. It was 77. Hurricanes, first and ten. And there's a handoff. Yeah, the ball! Inside cut. Number 75. Oh, no. Shelfo. Oh, no. Oh, and nice play by Shelfo. The O-Dog wraps him up tight, brings him down. No doing on first down there for the Hurricanes. That was a one yard of doing. That's all that was. That'll bring up second and nine. You know, that halftime seemed kind of quick to me. I mean, or it was seemed about the, the length of the, la the last couple of huddles by the Hurricanes. Yeah, it was about the same length. They timed it. So it brings up second down and 12. I suspect it took them all mm -hmm. half time to script that play. <laughs> you could be right. Oh, we kid because we love Rob. Camp has plenty of time to do a substitution here, and that's number five. Who's that coming in the game? That's Alden, Alden Bacon coming in the game at safety. He was replacing Jaquan Taylor, if I'm not mistaken. So second and 12, quarterback is yelling at the players to make sure they get in the right spot. Takes the snap, 
falls down at the, after the handoff. Room to the right-hand side, and that was a good play. That was Renner on the play, but also who made the initial contact? Yeah, Tyrese Cox, number 30, did a real nice job on that play. He penetrated in the backfield and disrupted that play. Nice play by number 30, Cox. And that was also uh, Zach Martinez in there on the initial contact as yeah, well. Yeah, did a real nice job, didn't he? So that's third down and 11. A stout stance so far. I hope I don't jinx it by saying that. By the Blue Devil defense on this opening possession of the second half for the Hurricanes. Yeah, we're looking for that inside line. The Shaw, Renner. Third down coming up for Renner's now. Martinez to really take over. We need a turnover here. Let's get a turnover and a quick score. All right, I could root, I could root for the turnover. He here in the second half. They're not giving up anything. Amherst hustles up to the line. And that is number uh, 44. Zach Smith at quarterback. There's the snap. Hurricanes. Fakes the handoff. He's and rolling he's to his go. right, looking to can. keep it. Nice move. Nice move to cut back inside, but he, but he runs into the welcome embrace of number 75, Owen Shelfo. Oh, no! Up the fourth down for Hamp. The O Dog from his defensive line position did a good job of tracking down the quarterback Great on the keeper. Play. That'll bring a fourth and about seven. Fourth and seven. Now, this is the decision time again. And it looks like. Yes, the Hurricanes are going to punt once again. That means that the Blue Devil offense will come out of the field after a nice, nice opening stance by the Blue Devil defense. One must wonder, given the uh, speed with which that decision was made, if in fact the officials might have had a chit-chat with those Amherst coaches about potential delay of game issues. Well, uh, now, it, it, it's important not to forget that in the overall picture here, it's a 6-6 game. And with the delay game that the Hurricanes are, are playing, every time the Blue Devils get the ball, they're going to have to do something with it if, if they want to win. Yeah, we're going to have to start referring to uh, the Hurricanes as, uh, with the Tar Heels, right? The old four corners. State, four, corner, four corner play. Princeton. Princeton. I was, as, I was associated with North Carolina. North Carolina, not North Carolina State, right? Oh, Princeton was North, the weave, my bad. Right, North Carolina, the Tar Heels. All I meant. Blue Devils break the huddle. Tudrin is going to be up under center. Familiar backfield mates of Renner and Rankins. There's the hit, the snap. There's the handoff. Looking for Zeru on the left-hand side. Makes the first tackler miss. He's into the backfield. One guy to beat. Renner on his horse. Touchdown! Number 25, Jacob Renner Jacob with the second Renner. touchdown of the day. First play. And that's what we talked about, Rob. Maximizing your opportunities with the ball. You know, I was watching number 22 Rankins on that play, and he and he chose not to block the cornerback. Obviously, he knows his running back, mate. And he went down and he blocked the safety. And that last block on the safety turned out to be the breakaway block. I thought he might try to take the corner out. He obviously knew that, that Renner could beat the corner on his own. That experience playing with your backfield mate led to a really great block by uh, Rankins on that play. Lead block that really opened the hole, and then it was all Renner explosion speed and just sheer athletic ability down the line for the game-leading score. We're, we're seeing the benefit here definitely of a, of, of a game late in the season after four weeks of preseason practice. Uh, we're seeing the benefits of all the hard work that these kids have done to see a play like that work. There's the handoff on the two-point conversion. Weaves his way through. Brought down short. 12-6, Blue Devils eight. over the Hurricanes. Addison Pfeiffer, number 78, in the takedown. And, the, you know, the, now the Blue Devil uh, defense needs to have another good, dominant. Camp up on Amherst Hurricanes now. 14-6, Northampton Blue Devils leading Amherst. After the touchdown, the Blue Devils are up 12-6. to six. The Hurricanes will start this drive on their own 40-yard line. Blue Devil coaches are shuffling the last players in and out there. That was Connor Mike. Winning number is 3 4 5 Here we go. We're ready to play some football. Here we go. They break the huddle, and they hustle up to the line. Quarterback takes his time to get up there. Next to the food booth. Make sure everybody's set. First and 10 now, Amherst. Takes the snap, Three, looking to hand off. There's the handoff. Oh, oh, great play. Zach Martinez, I'm sorry, Noah Renner, sniffed that play out as if he was in the huddle with him. That's a loss of four four yards. That's a great play by Noah Renner. Never had a chance. Jacob Renner was right in there on top of that play. It was, he was the fastest player on that play. Extremely impressive job by number 65, uh, Noah Renner, on that play. So far, that's probably the, the most impressive three, defensive play four, we've seen. Five, nine, seven, hey, is zero. that number uh, 14? Yeah, that's that's 
Clark foul pass that's uh, in the game. Number 14 in at safety. And he could, you know, he could be making the big play here with that one touchdown lead. That's a tenuous lead. Sometimes it's up to the safety to do his job. Surprise. I fully expect Clark to be up for the challenge should the ball come his way. Second and six. The quarterback takes the snap. It was almost brought down by Shaw in the backfield. Now he's keeping it for himself. Tripped up another fine play by Noah Renner. Noah Renner with the tackle. Noah Renner was actually uh, well blocked by the offensive lineman. Temporarily. Temporarily. And from the from his position on the ground, managed to trip up the quarterback. Yeah, as the game's going on, that uh, dominant athleticism we, we're seeing from some of these players is really starting to show through. And there goes just Justin Rankins in to replace his backfield mate, um, Jacob, Renner. Jacob Renner, as the coaches keep the players as fresh as possible. But then again, yeah, they're having a lot of time to rest in between plays. Yeah, let's focus on number, uh, it's like left tackle, number 69, Brandon Dostal on this play. He did a real nice job in those last two plays as well, along with uh, Joey Lamana. What a powerful Joey. This left side of the line did a nice job. Let's focus on the left side of the line. Third long here for Amherst. Wouldn't be surprised if uh, Amherst continues to try to run and run to the right side, putting some heat on uh, Dostal and Lamana. Let's see if that prediction holds true. Quarterback is up under center. Takes the snap. And we're going left. Rolling, looking to throw. Throws Throwing. the ball up in the air. That's picked off. Number 68, Ed Sarafin. Number 68, Edward Sarafin with the interception. Can't advance the interception or something? He stood there like he couldn't advance it. Um, I don't know what the rule is on that. If a defensive lineman, if he gets an interception, can advance the ball. But the important thing is that he got the ball back. I, I'm pretty sure he can, and I'm pretty sure he didn't care. It was his ball, and he was going to make sure everybody knew it. Interception, Seraphin. That was a uh, big high five from his coaches. He is the most excited player. He's, I think the most excited person in the town in Northampton right about that. That was a great play. He deserves sure to be was. excited. sure was, absolutely. Interception, nice play. He's probably tied for the all-time lead of interceptions among defensive linemen in Northampton Youth Football League history. So he should be happy about That's that. That's a record-breaking catch. Record, record, record tying, tying, record catch, tying right? I think. So now the Blue Devil offense will get back to work. Go Their ahead, last touch. drive lasted one play. Let's see what happens here. And a touchdown here There's could really be hand problematic hand for the Hurricanes. Say their, their team is a little bit slim in terms of numbers. Yeah, and time is running, as we know. Tugin up under center, takes the snap, takes the handoff, looking for Van Ass. Doesn't see him open, so he's going to keep him himself. Runs over the first tackler, ends up gaining about two, but there is a flag on the play. Could be illegal motion. Isa McCauley, number 38 for Amherst, on the stop there. We're going to see what the call is. Finishes off on the ground. The referee is talking to the coach as they try to figure out what, a, what the penalty is. Illegal motion on the offense. Trainer on the field, please. I believe that the referee was saying that the receiver was illegal motion. Rest away. After the penalty, Blue Devils have a first and 15 from midfield, 50 yard line. Clock is running here, and as you said, Rob, if they can punch it in here, I think they're going to be in pretty good shape. I think so, too. This is a big drive, and I'm sure the uh, Hurricane coaches are reminding their players of the importance of this drive. Key here is to avoid a turnover. Tugin up under center. He takes the snap. There's the handoff. Looking for some room on the left-hand side. Renner cuts through, cuts back up the middle. Jukes another tackler, and then suddenly he's in the clear. One guy to beat. Brings it to the inside, in for the touchdown. Those are three impressive runs by Renner. They sure are. Wow. Very impressive. He cut left. He cut back right. He cut left. He cut back right. He cut left. He can't bet right. And then he sprinted for a touchdown. Third of the day. That's a hat trick for Renner. He showed great vision and anticipation on that run because the defenders should have tackled him a couple times, but he managed to cut the right way and make the defenders miss. You know, you know what you saw in there, and, and that's not the kind of tackling that you teach. That was that old grab and pursue. I mean, he was lined up to be tackled a few times, and rather than tackling through the runner, they tried to grab him, and when they reached out to grab him, he was buying. He was gone. They they reached out to where you he know, was you, instead you, of you got to you got to you know lower you got to lower your shoulder and you got to drive through the man. You just can't reach and grab. Two point conversion try. Tujan under center. 
Takes the handoff. No, he did hand it off to Rankins. He is in for the two-point conversion. That's huge. That is a huge play. That makes the score 20 to six. Blue Devils over the Hurricanes. That's a big time, big time play, and that that could be the game, game clincher. If the Blue Devils can simply avoid turnovers in their next possession or two, that should do it. Well, the Blue Devil offense is coming off the field with a spring in their step. There's a lot of confidence in this team yeah, right now. Yeah, that's just just the opposite. As you look at the Hurricanes, they are they're tired. They're moving slow. They're tired. I think this uh, starts to explain the delay of game. I, I think you're right. I was thinking the same thing. Coaches on the Amherst side doing what they can to uh, rest their players as much as possible so they can last for the full four quarters. Uh, we've certainly been, been hard on them because we're, you know, we enjoy watching football, but given their lack of depth, they can understand why the Hurricanes take a little bit of extra time to give their players an opportunity to rest. This is an exhausting game, and chasing Jacob Renner or Noah Renner around. Don't make anybody tired. Yeah, Chase, yeah. Chasing, cha chasing Jacob and <laughs> avoiding Noah will make anybody tired. Don't make it tired. He's on the field. So Amherst will take over their own 40-yard line. They're trailing by 14 points. Coach is making some last-minute equipment adjustments. And right about now is when we start guessing about how much time might be left in the game. The referees are checking. This might be the fourth, fourth period. Yeah. Yeah, it might be what they're saying. Yep. Fourth, fourth quarter. quarter. Oh, hey, look at that. We we're right on top of it this time. <laughs> Learning how to read the body language of the officials. <laughs> All right, this begins the fourth quarter. Corrected. Hamp is leading 20 to 6. There's the handoff. This is 38, who's looking for some room on the left-hand side. That's and he good is brought right down there. by Renner, who's having himself a game. His backfield mate, Justin Rankins, made the runner go into the waiting arms of Renner on that play. That makes it second and nine here for the Hurricanes. I think there might be an injury on the play. Ow. <laughs> second and nine for the Hurricanes. They face the stout Blue Devil defense. Second and about nine here. Quarterback the looks around to make sure everybody's in the right spot. Takes the snap. This is another one of those slow developing plays. There's the handoff. Quick to the outside. Chevy Wall tries to stop him. Gets past Renner, too. Not going to get past Rankins. You know what? By number 22, Justin Rankins there was a couple of nice, nice, nice broken tackles by 41, but I love the fact that the Blue Devils are you know, really accelerating those tackles. And even though 41 broke some tackles, they really made an effort to tackle through the runner. That was good for him. And, and finally, you know, strike one, strike two, but there was not a strike three. Strike three was a good hit by, and a third and six coming by up the here Blue Devils, Amherst. stopping that, that run after a five-yard game. Yeah, and even though Chevy Wall didn't make the tackle, he did a good job of slowing up the runner. Yeah, and just a great great tackling effort there. You know, he exploded with his lower body. Nice yeah. form. Missed him, but I, I like the effort. That's, a, that's okay. Third and six now for the Hurricanes. Twenty six over the Amherst Hurricanes. And every play now for the Hurricanes is a big play as we're getting... Late in the fourth quarter now. And you sense that there was a little less time in between uh, in between plays there. So the coaches realized that they needed two scores. 44, Jackson Smith, the quarterback. Quarterback takes the snap, fakes the handoff. He's rolling to his right, trying that play again. And you know what? Chevy Wall wasn't going to be fooled twice. And down again by a sea of blue jersey. Yeah, number, number one, South Frank just wrapped him up. Nice job by Wall and South Frank on that play. Chevy Wall slowed him up again. And then uh, South Frank finished him off. Brings up fourth down and, let's say, six and a half to go. You know, after that long touchdown run by the uh, Hurricanes in the first half, they really have not uh, done much on offense since. No, they haven't really threatened at all. Fourth down, and there's a timeout on the field. It's a lot better. Than <laughs> Three, two. Fourth and seven for the Hurricanes. Big play here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they really need a first down here, don't they? Quarterback Andrew. takes the snap. There's the handoff. Got some room there on the left-hand side. Makes one tackler miss, two tacklers miss. Now it's a foot race. Finally brought down by Justin Rankins. Number 22, Justin Rankins with the open field tackle for Hamp. He just saved the touchdown there. It was a nice run by the Hurricanes there. That's their their biggest offensive play since their first one, Rob. Yeah, no, got to give uh, number 26 uh, Cardoso credit for that run. Kitty Cardoso did a nice job out running and pursuing Blue Devils. And he kept his team single-handedly in the game. That was a one-man effort. And he was tremendous on that play. 
Yeah. Yeah, and if uh, if if they had been stopped there, I think the game would have effectively been over. Yeah, that would that would have done it. The, the, the current Canes absolutely need to score on this on this drive. They're probably only going to get one more chance at them. Yeah, it gives them a. I'm not saying it's going to win it for them, but it gives them a little bit of a chance. Number 26. Yeah, it's an element of excitement. Now they are first and ten on the 34-yard line of the Blue Devils, with only 24 yards to go for a touchdown. For a score. First and ten now, Amherst. Quarterback checks his player's alignment. Takes the snap. Fakes the handoff. Rolling to his right. Cuts it back up the middle. Gets through one tackler. Brought down there by Will Shaw. And also... It was Renner on the play. Was number, Renner on that play as well. Number 30 Cox as well. On number 25, Yeah, nice play by Willie Shaw on that play. That was Hammer's QB, number four. That makes it second and five. Number 44. Yeah, number 65, uh, Noah Renner comes in, uh, gives uh, Cam LaFalle a little bit of a break here. It's a, there's a lot of little boy in that big boy. That number 54 is a big old third grader. He's going to be a dominant player here as time goes on. So two positive plays by the Hurricanes. Let's, let's see if that gives them a little bit of momentum here. They break the huddle. Amherst lines up now. The center is exhorting the Amherst fans to cheer a little bit louder. Second and five. Quarterback takes a snap. There's the handoff. Looking for some room on the left-hand side. Cuts it back. Cuts it back outside. And he's finally brought down there by Rankins and Renner. That's, that's that was some nifty running and some nifty tackling on that play. Yeah, results in a first down there. Yeah, there these was hurricanes a, some nice are determined. Dancing going on there. Gotta love Amherst. the effort of these hurricanes. They were looking a little dejected. They were looking a little bit defeated, but they've come back with some energy and really determined to make this a game. They have some momentum going there, and I've noticed that they've put Shelfo back in on the defensive line, maybe in an attempt to help slow down the hurricanes. Yeah. Is this is, uh, this noticed, is a nice little drive they got yeah, going and I here, noticed Rob. Noah Renner came back in the game, too, but he was limping a little bit. So the absence of uh, Shelfo and Renner step up the plate here. Definitely, uh, definitely gave the Hurricanes a little breathing room. First and ten. Quarterback takes a snap. There's the handoff. Looking for some room. Makes a couple guys miss. Finally brought Wall. down there by Chevy Wall and Owen Shelfo. He was doing some dancing again there in the hole, but danced a little bit too long. No gain. Sadiq on the run again for Amherst, number 41. And that's a, that's a good play because you want to stop their momentum there. They, had, uh, they started out on their own 40. They're all the way down close to the 20-yard line. Had a lot of positive momentum going, and then they stopped in there for no gain. Let's see if they could do it again here. Big time play by the Blue Devils defense nice on that play. Bringing up an even second bigger play now. on second and ten. So here we go. Second down and ten. Coaches are aligning the players. Love the pink socks on number 40. Is that 42 or 45? 44. In the center for Hamers. Quarterback takes a snap. Looking to roll out to his right. He's got a lot of room there. Sal Frank makes the with play. The tackle, oh, no. And they're going to call the flag. And I don't know if I agree with that one, Rob. Jackson Smith on the run there. That's going to be a horse collar tackle. Yeah, right he got there. him up high, but I don't. I. It didn't look to me like it was intentional or malicious. Or face mask is calling. They're calling the face mask, and you know what? He didn't get his face mask. If anything, that would be a horse collar tackle. But nonetheless, they're going to call the penalty, and I believe that's an automatic first down as well. And it's probably going to be half, half the, the distance. distance. Yep. So Sal Frank is, is really unhappy with himself there, but I don't think he should beat himself up too badly. No, you know, he hustled, he got in position, he just, now. one of those hands got underneath, it looked like one of those hands got underneath the shoulder pads, right? Yeah. Or underneath the, right around the, uh, First so, and goal, right? Uh, they're, they're keeping the, the the down marker. Let's see if they're going to change that over there. Yeah, I there. think it's first down. And our he's cameraman down is down telling down us down. that it was, in fact, a face mask. Hard to see from all the way on this side of the field. So that makes it first down and goal from the five-yard line. Quite, how, I I quite understand goal. that. They were at the 12. It's a 15-yard penalty. I believe it's a 10-yard penalty. First and goal well, now. But it would be half the distance and an automatic first down. Yeah. So they're just outside the five. Okay. Now we've seen the Blue Devil defense backed up before. Let's see how they can respond this time. 
Quarterback takes the snap, looking for the handoff. He's being chased. Lots of guys trying to get him down. Cuts it back. One guy to beat itself, Frank. And he got in for the touchdown. Those cutbacks at this age, Rob, those are killers. He is in for Number 41. Yeah, that was Zaid. Sadiq Zaid. Or Zaid Sadiq. That was a great play. Sure was. He's got some, some mojo in those legs. He does. That was very impressive. So that makes it 20 to 12 at this point. And this makes it a pretty pretty important two-point conversion because if they get this one, then they're kind of within shouting distance. They are. It's going to put a lot of pressure on the Blue Devil offense to uh, hang on to that ball. A turnover could be devastating. Which could explain why they're taking a lot of time here in the huddle. Here they go. Now we're ready to roll. Lines up for the two. Lining up for the two-point conversion. <laughs> Referee blows the whistle. And trying to Two minute warning. There's the handoff. Brought down. There's the pass. Picked off. Cougars got room. Hook for one. He's brought down. That's a big interception for Hampton. So one way to stop the two point conversion attempt, Rob, is to intercept the pass. Yeah, it's not that very effective. And, and if he had scored, my understanding was, was, that, was that the Blue Devils would be awarded two points. I'll go with that too, yes. They I, think that's, two I points. think that's the uh, the rule, right? If you return a turnover on a two-point conversion, two points are awarded to you? Yes. Makes it 20 to 12. We are under two minutes now, as we just learned. Yeah, so this drive could effectively end the game. And uh, we never know how many timeouts each team is awarded, but I'm sure we're going to find out here. I have a feeling Amherst may use all of them. Yeah, and, and they should. And my suspicion is one first down, even with all those timeouts, will be too many first downs for Amherst to stop the clock. So we need to see a first down here. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit of Tudor up the middle and Renner running around the end. Our favorite play in beauty football is you, take your fast kid and run him around the corner. You got to dance with what brung you, as they say. Here comes the hip offense. Let's see. Tudrin, Rankins, Renner talking it over. Tudrin lines up. Tudrin up under center. Takes the snap. There's the handoff to Renner. Looking for some room. Cuts it back up front. Gets it in the secondary. There's the first down. Still on his feet. And I think that's going to seal it. Got one guy to beat. He's at the five. Touchdown. Touchdown, Northampton. The unstoppable force today. My goodness. That's four touchdowns for Renner today. That's a great performance by uh, Renner. I also want to point out the nice hustle by Owen Shelfo from his offensive line position was 20 yards down the field making the last block. And that was the block that <laughs> did, the, did the final damage. Makes the score 26 to 12. What a great run. Pending the two-point conversion attempt. Yeah, Renner's just proven way too athletic and way too fast for this Amherst defense. I have a feeling that a lot of these Amherst defenders are going to see his back in their nightmares tonight, boy. That was just a whole lot of Jacob Renner's number 25 running away from them today. Dominant performance by Renner. Dominant performance by the Blue Devil offense. Let's give the whole team a, a lot of credit here. They have shown that they're the better team today. Yeah. Tudrin up under center. He's going to keep it himself. We're up the middle, yeah, and he is in good. for the two-point conversion. Good. good. Makes it 28 to 12. Hey, you know what? I'm uh, I'm real impressed with the uh, the effort of this uh, Hurricane team, especially in the second half. They've done a real nice job, and I think that's going to be the ball game. I think that's the game as they line it up to shake hands. The final score here at Tugin Field on October 20th, Blue Devils Pee Wee Division 28, Amherst Hurricanes 12. Oh, maybe not. We're not sure. We're not sure. Hold on. Nope. It's not the game. We get to be treated to some more queen. All right, so despite that premature ending call, they're still going to be playing out there. Late in the fourth quarter. There might be a player or two left. Looks like there's going to be a player or two left before they'll finally go out and shake hands. Although I can safely predict 
that there will be a handshake at the end. Timeout, Hurricanes. After the touchdown, the Hurricanes will take over on their own 40-yard line. I think that's number 12, Calvin Vile pass in there at left hand. Let's see if Calvin can end this game with a Calvin Splat on those... Uh, a Phyllis Splat. There we go. All eyes at number 12, file passes, but let's see if he can uh, make a dominating tackle from his left end position. The Amherst taking their usual time in the huddle after their timeout. They're going to try to come up with a play that will put the game in reach, I guess. We got to figure if it's their last game of the season, they got to dig and deep the in the playbook. Play. That's all we can see. Finally, they break the huddle. What is, it's, it's like doing the referees doing like the basketball count. What is that? Maybe that's trying to hustle them up to the line there. Ref, the coaches are aligning the backs. There's the snap. There's the handoff. Looking for some room on the right-hand side. Gets through the first. Cacklers. Gets past the second. Not going to get past number 68. Oh, nice, nice play Ed Serafin. By nice play. Serafin. Really nice play. Number 68, Edward Serafin. And he's there for the tackle. A couple of those Blue Devils got spun around on that play. but Serafin's uh, had a couple tackles today and an interception. Serafin came up big again. So nice run. There's the hat, which tells us that it is the end of the game. And that, folks, Final score, 28 to 12. So Blue Devils over the Hurricanes. This afternoon, 28-12 over the Amherst Hurricanes.